Good morning. My name is Mary Dowling. I'm an invigilator at the college for the past six years. And Hi, I'm Richie Whelan. I'm a fine year student studying civil engineering. Uh, hi, my name is Shane Murray. I'm a lecturer and program director in civil engineering in SCT or Carlo. Um, here today, or this morning, we're here to talk about assessments. So we'll have a look at the first question. So, in an assignment, what's the best way for a student to get an understanding of what they're being graded on and why is this important? Yes, I suppose, I suppose <laughs> that's one for me to answer. I suppose a criteria list of what needs to be done and then um, I suppose how many marks are being allocated to that um, topic or uh, task. Um, so then you, you can prioritise, you can put in more effort into a certain task than another and then just, I suppose, a checklist at the end then to make sure you have everything, mm -hmm. I that, suppose. That would be probably a good idea. So I suppose you're looking for, from a student's point of view, a, view, a detailed brief um, and then what are the marks being assigned to so that you, you know, you as a student can then say, right, well, this, this is what I need to do. Um, it, again, it may be worth having a discussion if that isn't very set clearly set out to sort of make sure that uh, you're fully aware of what you're being expected to do. Uh, what advice would you have for a student going into an exam? Well Mary, okay, I suppose from an invigilator I I'll also give a bit but uh, we'll let you from an invigilator's point of view. Okay, the, probably the most important thing is to make sure you have a valid student ID card. Up to now we have accepted an IT card, but every registered student in this semester should have an SETU card. You can get this, if you don't already have one, you can go to the reception desk in the main um, building and just ask for your student ID card. Don't leave it until the morning of the exam or even the day before the exam. Try and go a couple of days beforehand because if there isn't one already printed it will take time to print one for you. Alternatively at the last minute if you come in and you already have a card but left it in the car or left it at home, go to the reception desk before you go to the venue and get a letter. We will accept a letter but it has to be an official letter from the college. That's probably the most important thing is to have that because you will not get into the exam without your ID card. And the other thing is to make sure you leave your phone, your bag, your laptops, any programmable calculators or anything like that outside the venue. You're wasting time if you're asked to remove it while you're in the venue. You're wasting your time, your precious exam time. That's probably the other thing. The other thing, the only things you can actually bring into the hall are your student ID card and your writing materials as in your pens, pencils, ruler, an ordinary calculator, anything else you leave outside. Student services our student a union offer a facility where they will give you a ticket and you can leave your stuff in there for safety. Best of all, leave it in the car if you have a car or leave it somewhere else. Um, know your code, know what programme you're going. Arrive at the venue at least 15 minutes before and the doors will open 15, 10, 15 minutes before the actual exam starts. Outside the main venue, there will be a poster on the wall which will tell you what row you're sitting in. You match your code on your student card like if your KCC GDB is your code, you can look at that code on the wall and it'll tell you you're in row one, row three, row four. So you'll know all this before you go in. You're not panicking when you get inside the door. Our main objective is to keep you calm and cool and to know just what you need to know is what you have to write on your paper. You don't have to be worried about, oh, where am I going? Where am I to sit? You're going to one end of the hall and you should be at the other end. So arrive in time look at the poster outside the hall and then you will know exactly where you have to sit. Basically. Yeah, a few things from I, that I would recommend is it's important that you realise how long your exam is for. So is it a two hour exam? Is it a three hour exam? Uh, if it's a two hour exam, how many questions do I need to answer? Is it three questions, four questions, five questions? Because again, it, depending on how many questions you have to do will determine how, how long you will spend on a question because I think that that's a really important thing. Uh, I suppose 
at the beginning of the exam, I would recommend that you leave five minutes at the beginning to read all the questions, identify you know, what questions you're going to do. I would certainly recommend that the first question you do is a question that you think you'll do the best in, because that will give you, it'll relax you, um, and it'll give you, say, a, a lot more confidence saying, right, I've, of the 20 marks, I, I'm fairly confident that I'll get 18 of those. And, you know, the stress levels will reduce down. Don't just do question one because it appears first. I suppose the other thing to know is, um, is there a mandatory question? Because some papers may have a mandatory question. Or do I have to do, you know, if it's a split paper, do I have to do two questions from one section and three questions from another or something like that? So it's really important that you know, um, you know. Read the outside of the paper yeah. first. Yeah, the yeah. cover of the paper Yeah, first. and you should be familiar with that. Now, I, I do realise that we're going through semesterized exams, so the front cover of the new exam paper might be different to what it was in the past. So it's really important from a student's point of view that they know what they're expecting in the exam. Um, and the only other thing I would say that it might be worth their while uh, bringing, other than what you mentioned, Mary, is a drink. You know, nice. because again, you know, it, it can be nice to just, you know, take a sip just to... Yeah have something like that. Another yeah. thing is actually, and most of the exams in semester one now are two hour. There are the odd three hour, but yeah. most of them are two hour. Just go to the bathroom before you go in because you're wasting at least five minutes of your valuable time by in and out, yeah. waiting for somebody to bring you to the bathroom. And so if you can cut down on that unnecessarily, certainly you can go to the bath bathroom while you're in the exam. There's no problem with that. Um, but just, be aware of the things that you need to do. and You need to answer your questions, and that's the most important thing. If you can avoid having to waste time doing other things, cut it out. Yeah, and I suppose another thing from uh, a correction point of view, make sure you answer the question. Yeah. You know, don't just do a brain dump of writing everything down that you know about a particular topic. Make sure you're answering the question about that topic. Uh, anything... From your point of view, Richie, that we haven't covered that you would recommend that for students to do, or um, no, from I, your own experience yeah. as a student? Yeah, I suppose um, you've covered a lot there. Um, I suppose um, what Mary was saying there, going checking where you are in the role you're in and all that, even finding out that it just takes your mind off the exam a bit as well, and you're kind of just focusing on getting to where you're sitting first and you kind of just relax and forget about the exam, forget that you're actually having, a, having an exam, um, I suppose, but no, I think you've covered most of it. Uh, just... I suppose one other thing is make sure that you're, because again, depending on the type of uh, paper it is, you may have, say, some tables and formulas at the back of the exam script. So again, familiarise yourself with that paper. Exactly. It will say on the front of the paper uh, required extra requirements. Yeah. So if it's not on your desk and you cop it, raise your hand and don't waste time until, you're in, until you actually need the, the yeah. logbook or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and I suppose, again, if you spot you know, an error or something like that, and you, as you say, Mary, you know, if you spot it early, Ask the question early. Okay. Don't wait until the, near the end of the exam and say, oh, yeah, question three there, part whatever, uh, you know, we're missing a table exactly. or something like exactly. that. Because it does take the, a time to resolve it. By the time the invigilator will come to you and ask you what the question is, then we have to go back to the office and ring them. They will ring the lecturer. Yeah. So there could be a delay in time. So the, the sooner you cop it, the sooner you just raise well, your hand. Particularly in a two-hour exam, exactly. it's, yeah. uh, time is, time is, is, the essence, is, yeah. is very tight. Question three, what advice do you have about dealing with negative feedback or a low mark than expected? Um, Not the general. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suppose uh, when you do get back um, a lower mark than, ex than expected, um, I suppose it would be an option just to approach the lecture, hmm. just to um, get an understanding of how they mark and what they're looking for, maybe you just interpreted it wrong. Um, and 
then I suppose it's just um, studying that bit harder and a bit more um, and then um, proving it in the next exam that um, that you get a, a higher mark. Yeah, I suppose, you know, that's probably fair. Uh, it would always be a, a good idea, no matter what feedback you get, if you're unsure about it, to go and ask the lecturer. Um, you know, because obviously getting written feedback, it's limited to the, you know, how much detail you can go into. So, um, you know, and I suppose to a certain extent, it may also depend on the brief, the criteria, the rubric and stuff like that. It might not necessarily leave you the necessary scope to go into huge feedback for the student. Uh, it could be, as you say, Richie, that you took a, a slightly different interpretation of what you were being asked and I suppose this is where the criteria and having those discussions early enough before you fully delve into a, an assignment or whatnot to make sure it's clear in your mind what what you're being asked to um, to do I suppose um, yeah I suppose there is a I suppose if it's, C, if it's a CA as well I suppose there's no there's no point getting too down over it as well yeah, yeah. There'll be there'll be lots of more chances to make it back up. Absolutely, there. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the best way to manage your time around assessments, uh, whether that's completing assignments or uh, revising uh, for exams? Um, I'll take you some. I suppose uh, the way I would go around it anyway would be uh, to prioritize, make um, make a list of what you have. Due, when it's due and the way I think uh, people fall back on is if the, the the assessment that's due the closest they start doing that first and to try get it out of the way um, so then they can move on to the next one but whereas if you start with your last one that's due you know say you have three three assignments and uh, the, the furthest one away that's due you start on that task and get that done because you're still going to put in the same amount of time for the assessment that's due closer to you um, that's that's the way i uh, i uh, go around it anyway okay that's an interesting approach i suppose you know for any given assessments you know it definitely time management skills and i suppose from a, a an academic point of view we are trying to prepare you for the real world so again giving you tasks now again obviously there's there's a balancing act there on giving you um, enough without overburdening you like you have other things other than college life uh, exams yes. and assessments uh, yeah. you know so it's trying to get that balance right but i suppose it's trying to estimate how long you anticipate it's going to take you uh, you know, would probably be a good idea, you know. Uh, now, that's, obviously, that's a really hard... Yeah, but that's, that's again, coming back to the understanding the what, you, what you're being graded on. How, yeah. much, how much the assignment is worth, like, if it's... If one assignment is worth 5% and the other is worth 10%, you're going to have to put in more, more uh, time into the assignment that's worth 10% than 5%, you know. You, don't, suppose, you don't want to spend too long on it. Yeah, and I suppose that's whether you're made aware of how much each of the assessments that's are. That's it too, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's, you, you don't necessarily want to be burning the midnight oil, you know, if your deadline is nine o'clock on a Monday morning that you, you're up until yeah. six o'clock on, on so Monday morning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, heard a, I heard a man once say, if, uh, if tomorrow isn't the due date, today isn't the due date, but I wouldn't say go by that. <laughs> no, uh, we, were, we certainly wouldn't be recommending that uh, from, a, from an academic point. <laughs> but yeah, look, I suppose it's, yeah, it's, it's trying to balance it, you know, I yeah. suppose in every walk of life it's trying to get a, a, a good balance in, you know, it's, it's important that you have life, you know, downtime and stuff like that as well, so, but yeah, you want to put your best foot forward. Mm. Um, yeah, revising for exams, um, certainly what I would recommend um, students do, uh, would be say maybe if you revise a particular topic go and have a look at some of the past exam papers um and see you know 
can you answer them? Um, and maybe the first time you try and answer them, you might have your notes there. Um, see, can you answer them in the time constraint as well? So again, you know, if it's if you have 20, 25 minutes to do a question, see, can you do the question in that time? Um, then maybe, you know, a couple of days later or so, see, can you actually do it with no notes in a time constraint, you know, um, see whether you've gained knowledge or not, as the case may be, you know, or is there things that you need to, ah, uh, yeah, I need to go back and take out the notes to look at that, I can't remember that section there or that part. So, that, you know, that's a, something I would recommend because, look, exams are a very pressurised system um, and it's important to try and mimic that as much as possible. Um, now, obviously, you're doing it at home or in the library or whatnot now, um, you know, but try and do it in the time constraint that you will have in the exam. Um, yeah, that is a big thing too is uh, exam papers. That's, that's uh, the... Greatest thing to do for exams is just exam papers, exam papers, exam pass papers. Just yeah. pass the exam papers, and eventually, like once you, once you're completing them, though, I would recommend to get feedback off the lecture, send it to the back to the lecture, make sure you're doing it correctly, and then getting just some feedback points off of them as well, and just see if you're going wrong in some places, and then you can focus on that for a while. Yeah, and again, just from a lecturer point of view, um. Again, as I said earlier on about assessment, make sure you're answering what you're being asked. Don't just brain dump everything down on a given topic because you could be asked to, uh, you know, give your opinion and you just throwing down facts this and giving an opinion. Um, and the other thing I would say, and this is where I keep coming back to knowing how much time you have per question. From a lecturer's point of view, there's nothing more disheartening than you open up a student's exam script and they're meant to have done we'll say five questions and they've only answered four well straight away the maximum mark that they're being marked out of is 80 percent as opposed to 100 percent in my view it's far easier to pick up marks at the beginning of a, a question than it is to squeeze the last bit of marks out at the end of a question yeah. um so again from a student's point of view say we've 25 minutes to spend on a question at 25 minutes, stop, leave some papers, leave room, move on a couple of pages and start answering the next question. <clears throat> because again, depending on how much time you've allotted, um, you know, you could have some time at the end to go back uh, and maybe add in a bit more. Um, again, also, if, you know, it might be worth saying at the end of a question, you know, due to time constraints, but, you know, I discussed, you know, a couple of bullet points, but you're not going into Definitely. great detail, yeah. but at least you're showing, well, I, I have a realisation that these things I would include if I had the time. Um, so there are sort of things that I think from a, an academic, from a person correcting a point of view, you know, it's important to try and get that information out there because we can only give you marks for what is on the paper. Okay, um, what are some common issues students tend to deal with during exams? Richie, you're over to you again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all these questions are directed. <laughs> uh, well, maybe if I come in there just as yeah, 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 totally. Uh, we have come across uh, especially in winter time, people get snuffles and sneezes and coughs and everything. Noise, and if that's yeah. like, distracting you, all you have to do is raise your hand and ask for earplugs. Okay. None of the students mightn't realise, but they are yeah. available. I didn't know that. Because we can't go and say, look, I'm sorry, could you stop coughing? <laughs> yeah, so just for your, just to sort your problem out, yeah. earplugs are available for things like that. Also, if people are bringing in food, which they're entitled to bring in, don't bring in an apple or crisps or something that you have to you know make noise opening or yeah. things like that because that is distracting and be respectful of the other students if you're leaving the exam early do it quietly it will be announced but people just don't hear that do it quietly if you have to go to the bathroom or anything you're not scraping the chair along the ground and moving the table and just be respectful of your other mm. students yeah yeah noise will probably be noise one can be a lot issue yeah. yeah and if you have a problem with the invigilators walking up and down which we will do in the main venues all you have to do is say, sorry, you're distracting me. 
we're human we will move you yeah. know we won't we're here to benefit you not to parade up and down the hall yeah, sort of yeah. thing, you know. I suppose another thing that can happen as well um, and it's happened to me once or twice you get the wrong exam paper yeah I suppose there's there's no need to panic no nope. it will be it will be um, the right you'll get the right one and I'm pretty sure you'll get the extra time as well say if the exam was meant to start at two o'clock and oh, you didn't get to start till ten past two. No, 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 that you'll will be added your, on to the end. Yeah. Yeah. If it's our fault, yeah. that will be added on. If you arrive late, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. But there's no need to panic though, no. either. Don't panic. And I mean, don't wait until you're on the second last line of the last page of the script. To look to, for a new book. You know, mm. be in the middle of the page, raise your hand. Yeah, you exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, if you know you're coming to end the exam script, you... Yeah. Raise yeah, your hand exactly. get another one yeah, before, exactly. Don't before you even finish that yeah, question. Because then you get panicky and then you're, yeah, your mind you're waiting wanders. there and yeah. then you're trying yeah. to think. And yeah. Your mind because if there are 200 people in a venue, like and there's only so many of us sort of thing, it will take time to get to you. So just don't wait till you actually need it now. Same with a bathroom break. Don't wait until you... Yeah. You really need to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose... Um, it's important that you know what time your exam is starting at because uh, we, we've had a situation where a student thought their exam started at um, you know two o'clock and it started at nine o'clock and they missed the exam yeah That's, or the wrong day or whatever yeah or, or the wrong venue exactly um, and if you arrive you won't be allowed into the hall um, first of all there will be notices and everything will be read out okay so if the exam starts at nine o'clock the door will shut at two minutes to nine. And if you're outside the door and you haven't arrived at the door while the door is open, you will have to wait until all the notices are read out, everybody else has handed out their papers and everything before you will be allowed in. But you will not get extra time at the end of it. That's, okay. you benefit, yeah. you lose that yeah. time, okay? Yeah. So, so what sure time do they have to be in by then, Mary? So before my advice exam? was allow yourself to be at the venue at least 20 minutes before the exam starts. Just to be sure, the door will open 10 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, depends on the numbers that we're expecting for the day. But if, allow yourself to be there in time. You have seen what row you're sitting in. You make sure you have everything. You have left everything with the students' union or wherever. So you're not panicking. You're not in a fluster running in at the last minute and I don't know where I'm sitting and all this kind of thing. Just So you're calm and you're cool. And then you'll be calm and cool approaching your paper. And the door shuts. The door will shut at exactly a minute before the exam is due okay. to start. You will have to wait until everything is, the notices and everything are read, then you will be brought, then you'll be allowed in. If you arrive 30 minutes after the exam starts, you will not be allowed in. Okay. Okay? You have a 30 minute break. Equally, if you're sitting there and you said, oh, I haven't a clue about this paper, I'm wasting my time sitting here, you'll have to sit there for 30 minutes. You won't be allowed to leave. Okay. You have to make sure you've signed the register and all that kind of thing before you can leave. Um, what's the best advice in your experience for maintaining a positive mindset around exam time? I <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose just on the background of myself, I've done two years online in the college, first and second year, and then the last two years have been in in the college exams um, I suppose maintain a positive mindset as we were just saying um, exercise mm -hmm. clears the mind uh, you always kind of feel good after a bit of exercise so you, you know you're not you're not feeling down on yourself either um, I suppose it's always good to take a break too you do you do a lot of work um, coming up to exam time you're in the morning till lunch time till evening time and then till whatever 10 o'clock in the night but it's always it's always good to schedule breaks between that even if it's get out go for a 15 or 20 minute walk or something like that just just to clear and get away from it for a half an hour or that um routine is probably good as well though isn't yeah it? having a good routine yeah 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 knowing what you're going to do and knowing what you're going to study this day and then the next day and planning around it i suppose is is part of it as well. Because I suppose at this stage, you have your exam timetable, you know what exams are on what day. So again, it's trying to break down when you're going to do 
each of the particular modules when are you going to prepare study for them. those yeah. prepare for them and I suppose and this is back to something we were talking about earlier on by doing past exam papers and you know getting that feedback from the lecturer and so on that yeah you're in the right direction you know that you answered that very well or you could improve in in areas here and there you know that will put you in a positive mindset having done that work that you can do it exactly Exactly. um so i suppose that's um one way in that you can try and remain positive is well i've i've the work done i've done some of the past exam papers i've tried to do it in a time constraint situation you know i'm fairly confident if if similar types of questions uh, and again there's only so many questions we as an academic can ask you so again having a look at those past exam papers are the best way in which you can prepare for um future exams um now obviously with us moving from year long to semesterization the exam papers will be different than they were in the past uh but you know um the material the type of question that you know there there may be in previous years it might be a three exam a three hour exam and now it's a two hour exam or the module has been you know some of the material is in semester one some of it is in semester two so you know it's a matter of looking at that and seeing right well you know you could be asked a and b of you know we're not necessarily going to go down to the c because again there's less marks going for a question so again it's familiarizing yourself with as we were saying earlier on how long how many questions i need to do and so on so i suppose there are a few things that would relax the student if they know what they're prepared for what what they're expecting what they get i suppose that's something I suppose it's telling yourself that though as well, when you were mentioning um, about planning planning your exams and doing <coughs> the exam papers and you know and you know when you're after doing the work, yeah. even, even just that part of just telling yourself, like I know because some people panic and like going to an exam, preparing it like oh geez I know nothing and but you do like just tell yourself you do know you've done this stuff before yeah. you do know what you're doing. Have confidence in yourself. Yeah, a bit of confidence. Yeah. 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 In your ability. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but, uh, that's easier said than done in some cases. It, it is, but yeah, it's yeah. to try and if you can get that positive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keep telling yourself. And now, if you get to the venue in the morning and <clears> you're panicking and you get your you get yourself in such a state that you're nearly having a panic attack, that's not the end of the world either because we can deal with that. We have a nurse on site who can help you calm you down and everything. And I've known it can happen in ten minutes. They can have you as calm, and you can go back in and do your exam. No problem. You know, if you, just don't get yourself worked up yeah. to a state. But if you do, there are help. There is help there for you. That's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, do you think continual assessment makes learning and teaching better overall? Why? Uh, or why not? <laughs> yeah, I suppose they are. They do. I think they do uh, make learning and teaching better overall because. Uh, with a uh, continuous assessment, you're going off and you're learning your yourself basically. You're um, you know, you're able to use it as the way you would be say in a work placement. Like you're able to go and um research whatever the topic that you would that your continuous assessment is on and find out a few things about it and um. Then again, doing so many of them as well, you'll you'll learn more throughout it as well. Um, yeah, I, I suppose from uh, you know, it's from a student's point of view, it forces you to actually go. I suppose potentially and study something that you're being assessed on. So it then gives you an idea of whether you fully understand that particular area. Um, now, uh, you did make a point, you know, um, it's trying to make sure that you're not overloaded with continual assessment. And that's obviously, you know, a, there's a, a very fine balance in getting that right from, you know, I suppose uh, the academic team 
and the student's point of view. And I suppose this is where deadlines and negotiation skills between students and lecturers, you know, because again, we're not always fully aware of what everyone else is giving and it's important. And again, that's, it's a, a life skill, a transferable skill as much as anything to be able to say, right, well, you know, Shane, um, the rest of the guys have given us a deadline of that same Friday or at nine o'clock. Is there any chance you could move that to the Monday or something like that? You know, uh, because you will be faced with that in, in, in the workplace, uh, you know, that people will be giving you work to do um, and you know, you need to be given the time to and actually... Sometimes you just have to say no as well, you know, just hold it down a bit, calm it down yeah. a bit. Yeah. But I suppose uh, continual assessment, you know, it's it's a good way from an academic's point of view to see whether the students fully understood what you were trying to get at, as well as from a student's point of view, getting feedback and, oh yeah, yeah, I did fairly well in that continual assessment. So... Again, I, I think I've a decent grasp on that particular topic or whatever that particular assignment was, was on. And then again, just another thing, um, going into the exam, I know a lot of exams are 60-40 or 50-50. <coughs> like when you put in your efforts to continue assessment, you already you could already have... Passed the exam. 20, yeah, you yeah. could already pass the exam yeah. or you could but it have... it takes the pressure then off. It does, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, you could maybe, say if you had a harder exam, you could prioritise and put more study into that one rather than this one, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. That makes it a better overall as well, I think. Yeah, I, I suppose that's probably, you know, one of the advantage of sort of having some sort of a 60-40 or 50-50 split in that you are being assessed as you go through a particular module and you as a student gets that feedback and therefore you're building in marks into the bag. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. So I suppose it's, 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 again, back to the positive mindset, you're going in to the exam knowing, no, yeah. you know, I've done a decent Just effort. Pressure off a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. The night before an exam, what are the things that a student should or shouldn't do? Uh, over to you, Richie. <laughs> uh, I suppose you shouldn't cram. Cram all the things in. Um, I think you just, tr if you go to overload, I, I, speaking from experience, I suppose I've done it once or twice before and you don't get as much out, out, um, out of yourself for the exam than you expect, like. Um, if you're cramming all this information in, you're only able to get out so much the next morning. Because next morning as well, you'd be tired. You, you're after staying up late, you'd be tired. Uh, you wouldn't have that uh, fresh energy mind um, to do the exam. Um, I suppose what, what you should do, I suppose, is... Again, it comes back to the plan. Knowing when you're going to go to bed. You know, taking taking that break away, saying I'm going to finish studying at nine, ten o'clock. You know, finish at that time. Don't say I'll do one more question. I'll do I'll do just another bit. Just make sure to take it, stop it there, get um, go away, get sorted for the next day for the exam day, and then maybe if you are a little bit worried, just get up maybe a half an hour earlier in the morning so that you're up and you're getting ready for exam, and maybe just going over. The last few bits, if they well, that's if the exam is at nine o'clock, I suppose, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, going over a few bits, uh, just bullet points and stuff before before the exam that morning. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, yeah, do definitely. a last minute check that you have what you need for the actual exam, yeah, like your student exam card, your yeah. ruler, yeah. your page, yeah, exactly, or, just have it ready, yeah. yeah, not to be panicking in the morning and running looking for a viral. Bring in a couple of virals, there's no you can bring in. Yeah. A shelf load of them if you want to, we won't stop you. <laughs> yeah. um, I suppose it's important that you fuel the body. Yes. Uh, you need to eat. Um, mm. So again, you know, try and have a, a normal meal at normal times in the night before and then the morning of the exam, whatever you normally eat, um, mm. you know, probably is a good way of getting you set for the exam. Yeah, it goes back to then what Mary was saying, routine. Don't break your routine. No, like, don't. There's, there's no point. Like it, it'll, it won't benefit you in any way. Yeah. I suppose, you know, again, depending on the type of person you are, 
you know, some people are very routine oriented and that suits them. Others are... And it's not a time to start a routine either. No. Let's you know. <laughs> um, say too, if you haven't yeah. done it before, like don't, the, no, there's no point it's starting for now. you now. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, when you do finish study, it, it's important to try and get some way of trying to relax your brain before you try and go to bed because there's nothing worse than having something going, on going around your head and you trying to go to sleep. Um, so, you know, I suppose that's now whether that's going and going for a walk or going and playing on a computer game or watching TV or reading a book or whatever, music or something. Uh, you know, whatever you do to relax, it's probably important to try and um, do that, yes, I suppose. Yeah, a bit of distraction. Yeah, forget about for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I suppose the other side of it is, you know, again, in preparing for an exam and stuff like that, like you're not in this on your own. Like you have classmates, you know, it's a great way when you're studying, um, you know, if you're not sure about something, I would say, you know, someone in your class is probably just as good at uh, being able to tell you where you're going wrong or whatnot, or if you're stuck on a particular topic, ask them, um, you know, so I suppose that can, you know, be of benefit, you know. Obviously, maybe not tonight before the exam yes, or whatnot. Exactly. What can a student do if they're not, if they aren't happy with their results? They hmm. aren't happy. Yes, they're not happy. Um, I know they can, uh, if they are very unhappy, I know they can get it. Is it reviewed or reviewed? rechecked? Yeah. Uh, I'm not well, sure first exactly. First of all, they can view their own script to yes. make sure that what's in their head is actually what's on the paper. Yeah. So you can request to review that. And if you're not happy then that you have, you think you're unfairly maybe, unfairly marked, well then you can request a review from your lecture. Yeah. yeah. So what that is, is where the exam paper is taken out, the marking scheme, the questions are looked at, and the third party also looks at to see whether the marks that you, the question, they'll read the question, they'll have a look at, you know, how the marks were assigned and whether they're fair yes. or not. Yes. So they will independently look at the marks, the grading, to make sure, um, you know, that it's fairly marked. And um, again, that process... Now, again, there are deadlines and there so on. There are deadlines and it does take a while, but you are entitled to it, don't yes. you? I think you are not entitled yeah. to it. And don't be afraid to question the mark once it's been reviewed by the lecturer and say, no, this stands. But then go and ask, like, well, where did I go wrong? You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Lecturers are human and they're there to help you, you know. Yeah. But that review process, there is a third independent, yeah. third party does look at it and they will check to see whether the marks assigned were reasonable yes. or not, yeah. as the case may yeah. be. Yeah. Again, I've done many of them, and you would maybe say, right, well, you could have given them maybe an extra mark here or there, and you were overly fair there. So, you know, so again, from a student's point of view, your mark actually potentially could go down as oh, well as they can, can go up. Yeah. But again, the process is there to try and make sure that a student isn't, isn't disadvantaged. And, and is that where your continuous assessment can come into play as well, can it? Uh, yeah, yes. Anything else? Uh, what can a student do? I don't think there's anything else on that if they're not happy. Again? Mm, I suppose there's nothing to get into down over it as well. Like, I know you can do repeats as well. You can. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I know people probably don't want to be doing them, but you can redeem yourself in... Yeah. What options do students have if they fail? Obviously, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't be aware of that, <laughs> Richie. Sure, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. As I was saying, there you can you do have the option to repeat. I suppose then again, it it is does depend on how many you fail as well, isn't it? Okay, so. Uh, it's probably important from a student's point of view, really, to ensure if they do fail, because it 
there is a huge variation from program to program and probably campus to campus and even in some cases module to module yes. to make sure that they're fully aware of you know what are my options if I do fail my module do I, do I get a second opportunity or is the next opportunity when that module is run uh, next year so it probably is Course tutor is probably best place to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Um, course class tutor, yeah, program director. The relevant lecturers are probably would know down to the granular of their specific module. Exactly. Um, so, you know, um, they're probably best placed um, to give you specifics about what are my options if I do fail. Um, so, yeah, I suppose that's, yeah. that's an important thing. So would anyone like to add anything in relation to the exams from a student point of view? Just um, in addition to um, what you're allowed to bring into the venue with you and what you are not allowed to bring into the venue, I have to be totally clear that you are not allowed to bring in a mobile phone, whether it is turned on or not is irrelevant. If it's in your possession and you're found with it in your possession, that will be classed as an infringement and that could be you could be brought to a disciplinary hearing. Smartwatches are not allowed. Programmable calculators are not allowed. Obviously a laptop or an iPad, we will see that going in, but that is not allowed either. Just to be aware that what you can bring in and what you cannot bring in. Basically what you can bring into an exam venue is your student ID card or a letter from to say that you're a student and your writing materials, an ordinary calculator and that's basically it. No notes of any description or anything else. If you bring in a pencil case, it's best if you bring in a clear one. You will be asked to take whatever you need out of your pencil case, put your pencil case on the floor. Make sure you have no notes in your pencil case, whether intentionally or not. And on your calculator, make sure there's no writing whatsoever on your cover of your calculator. They yeah. will all be infringements if it's caught and you haven't owned up to it or removed it from the venue while you're asked in the first place. But I suppose what would happen if um, you, you do notice that you do have your phone in your pocket um, and you didn't realise it and you're probably 15 minutes into the exam, would it be okay to put up the hand and just say, look, I have my phone in my pocket, I didn't realise? You can do that, but to be quite honest with you, the best thing to do is make sure you don't have it in, in yeah. the first place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't bring it in in the first place. It's a grey area, right? Yeah. But don't bring it in in the first yeah. place. Yeah. Or if you go into the bathroom and you discover, oh my God, my phone is in my pocket. It's a bit late then, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will like there are. It will go to a disciplinary hearing and it will be assessed. It may not have any impact on your results, but it could have, and better off to avoid it yeah. in the first place. Uh, I suppose we'll leave that there uh, now. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, I hope you found uh, um, our discussions informative, and um, good luck in your forthcoming. Uh, Exams and assessments. Best of luck. Thank you. Pre preparation is key. <laughs> <laughs>